From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I guess we were cut off, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, apparently. Now, who did you say you... name's Bartlett, J.D. Bartlett. You mean you work for Mr. Bartlett? I mean, I am Mr. Bartlett. I mean, Miss Bartlett. Oh, now you've got me all confused. You're confused. Look, Mr. Dollar, the only J.D. Bartlett in town is me. I'm him. Of a her, I mean. Now, you see what you've done. I'll never forgive myself. Well, anyway, I'm the tri-state guarantee agent here in Cranesburg, and it seems the least you could have done was to look me up. Well, give me time. I just got in town. You had time to rush out there to that south side bar and start lushing it up. I came out here to this joint to talk to a jewel thief. You what? Jewel thief? It's the guy who phoned Hartford and offered to make a deal on the crane necklace. He claims he's the one who stole it, that for a slight consideration, I can get it back. And what do you think? I think I've walked in on the nuttiest case in the month of Sundays. Hey, look, he's waiting for me at the bar. Suppose I drop by later and... Are you sure J.D. Bartlett is a woman? You're the first man who ever doubted it. I'll see you later, Mr. Dollar. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office Tri-State Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Cranesburg matter. Expense account continued. When I told her the case was nutty, I meant it. The start of it had been fairly ordinary. A pearl necklace insured for $20,000 had been stolen from a wall safe in the home of its owner, local socialite Melba Crane. Smiley Prell, a known small-time jewel thief, had phoned us, claiming to have the necklace, and Smiley offered to talk a deal. But before I'd been in town ten minutes, things began to crumble and change shape. Melba's feather-headed Uncle Phineas had called at my hotel to warn me that his niece was headstrong and impulsive. Or at least he said that was why he'd called. When I tagged the rumor that the aristocratic cranes were flat broke until recently. And now, at the Green Lion Inn, Smiley Prell, a burglar by admission, was turning skittish and climbing up. Look, Dollar, I got no time to talk now. Oh, relax, will you, Smiley? A man in your profession can't afford to develop a case of nerves. Oh, very funny, but I got to blow this joint. Now, I told you before you went to get that phone call, I got things to do. Yeah, I know what you told me. All right, then. Now, you meet me later at that place in time I told you about it. Sit down. If you try pushing me, you're never going to get them beads back. You ever think of that? I don't know where I am anyway. I told you I... Sure, and an hour before on the phone, you told me to meet you here, and we talk a deal. All right, and so we will. We'll talk later. Hey, what's the matter with you? Uh, How many times I got to tell you? Something's come up, and and I got to get it straightened out. Like what, for instance? Like what? Never mind. It's none of your business. It's, It's like personal. So, uh, later, huh? You said you were being handed a double cross. Now, what kind of a double cross? That's exactly what I'm trying to figure out. Who did it? Who crossed you? Never mind who crossed me. It's none of your business. Did you have a partner on this job? Oh, look, don't try to kid me. You checked my M.O. before you ever left Hartford. If you did, then you you know I always work alone. Well, it can be a first time for anything. Look, I got no time to talk. Did you have somebody on the inside, Smiley? Hmm? Somebody in the crane house who tipped you off, briefed you? Hmm. You, know, you want to know too much. Is that where the double cross came from? No, I, I got nothing more to say. More? You haven't said anything yet. Well, you meet me tonight where I said two dollar at nine o'clock. You know something, and... Smiley? I don't think you've got it. Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? The necklace. I don't think you had anything to do with the robbery. I don't believe you've got it. Or that you've ever even seen it. You don't, huh? No. No, I think you're trying to pull a con of some kind. But it's not going to work. Um, a dollar... You know what the things look like? Yeah, I got photographs of them. All right, then check me out. There are 38 pearls, hmm? Yeah. And they're pink, match color, match size. And they're not pierced like they usually are. Each one's set in a a fitted platinum mount, and the mounts are fastened together with those, um, you know, those those little links. What kind of a stone in the clasp? In the clasp? There ain't any stone in the clasp. Hey, what are you trying to do? Okay, okay, all right, you've got it. Or at least you've seen it. So, how much do you want? 
Meet me tonight at 9 o'clock, and I'll tell you, 1412 North Oak Street, room 6, oh. and no cop. Not if you want them beads back, you understand? Not any more than I did when I walked in here. Well, you will, so just keep your shirt on. Smiley, if you can talk tonight, you can talk now. There's no reason oh, to stop around. Oh, knock it, pal. Now, look, I got things to do and not much time to do them in, so go find yourself a cool pad somewhere and simmer down, huh? So long, Doc. <laughs> Item 4, 275. I was stuck with the check, naturally. So I paid it and strolled toward the door. I stopped just outside in the entranceway to the roadhouse and watched Smiley cross the parking lot toward a tree-shaded taxi stand where a couple of waiting hacks had parked out of the sun. A few yards away from me stood another cab, this one occupied. I stepped out of the entrance and walked over to the taxi because I'd recognized the passenger in the back seat. Afternoon, Mr. Crane. Hey, what? Oh, what? I'm sorry if I startled you. Oh, no, oh, not at all. No, I, I just didn't hear you walk up. Yeah, I, uh, I noticed you seemed pretty concerned with something across the lot. There. Across the lot, but I'm afraid I don't. It understand. wouldn't be that fellow getting into the taxi, would it? But what, what fellow? I don't know what you mean, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I could be wrong. I hadn't even noticed the man, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, then of course you won't mind if we just stand here and watch him drive off. Fred, I, I really should get back into town. Good. I'm going that way myself. I've got a car here. Be glad to take it. But I've already engaged this driver. Well, pull him off. We'll get going. Give us a chance to talk on the way in. You might as well, Mr. Crane. The other taxi is already out of sight. Well, I hadn't noticed. Very well. Here you are, driver. Keep the chin. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. My car is over this way. I'm afraid there may be... A misunderstanding of some sort, Mr. Dollar. Oh? You seem to be under the misapprehension that I was interested for some reason in, in that stranger who left. I said I could be wrong. And I can assure you that you are. <laughs> uh, here's the car. Right now, to the best of my knowledge, I have never seen the man before in my life. Well, there'll be days like that sometimes. Yeah. What's that? A colloquialism of the common man, Mr. Crane. What, uh, what were you doing out at the Green Lion, by the way, Mr. Crane? Well, I was... Uh, Just, uh, killing time, uh, were you? Well, as a matter of fact, sir, I was waiting to talk with you. Well, you don't say. Yes, I was afraid I may have left a wrong impression when I talked with you at your hotel earlier today. In what way, Mr. Crane? But I mean... About my niece, Melba. Well, you said she was headstrong, impulsive. Oh, yes, but not a bit more so than any other normal, average girl, Mr. Dollar. Oh, I see. I don't really know why I considered it so important at the time. I, I must have been a little upset. Yeah, well, that's understandable. You don't have a jewel robbery in the family every day. Well, in the family? I mean, to, stolen from the family. Well, that's right. <laughs> Apparently, we're both giving wrong impressions. Well, yes, I did say we are. Centuries, I'm glad that everything is cleared up now. I wish it were. Yeah. What's that? Nothing has been cleared up yet, as far as I can see. The necklace is still missing. Well, of course, that isn't what I meant. It's what I mean. It's the only reason I'm here in Cranesburg, to recover that necklace one way or another. Well, then, what do you mean by one way or another? Either by tagging the thief and getting it back through police action, or, if necessary, by making a deal. I just talked to the man who claims to be in possession of the pearls, as you know, of course, but he wasn't. I beg your pardon, sir, but I do not know, of course. Well, then let's say, may have guessed. You were in my hotel room when he phoned. You heard me arrange to meet him here. I didn't really pay much attention to that phone call. All right. Anyway, when I flew in here from Hartford, I expected this to be a cut-and-dried matter of routine. I'd meet Prell, make a quick deal to get the pearls back, and catch the next plane out. Only it's apparently not going to be that way. Uh, it isn't. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, I've stumbled onto a whole nest full of question marks, and nothing seems to add up quite right. Prell, for one thing. I think he's got himself into a spot of some kind. His attitude doesn't make sense. And what else, Mr. Dollar? Little things. Rumors I've picked up around town. Hints. And, of course, the biggest question mark seems to be right close to home. Which one is that? You, Mr. Crane. <laughs> When I dropped him off at the center of town, he was still fumbling with vague phrases. 
trying to clear up the misapprehensions, as he put it, but actually saying nothing. He was sure, however, that I would understand. He was wrong. I didn't. Even my mistake about J.D. Bartlett, Tri-State's local agent, seemed to fit in with the rest of the mixed-up case. I'd assume from the name that Bartlett was a man. But when I walked into the office a few minutes later, I was suddenly happy that I was wrong. Your dollar, I presume? That's right. Miss Bartlett. Just make it J.D. I've spent a lot of time and effort getting those initials pounded into the skulls of the local inhabitants. Why? It's good for business. Makes me one of the boys, you might say. I kind of doubt it somehow. As you mentioned on the phone, you're, uh, unmistakable. (laughs) For that, I'm going to drop the dollar and call you Johnny. Pull up a chair. Yeah. Thanks, J.D. Did you get anywhere with that character who snatched the Queen's rocks? No. How come? Oh, he stalled. Postponed the whole deal until 9 o'clock tonight. Why? Ah, he was nervous, I guess. Huh? Well, that's about the only reason I can figure. And between him and old Phineas Crane, I'm getting a little nervous myself. How did Phineas get into the act? Good question. Wish I had a good answer. Hey, what about these cranes, J.D.? What makes them tick? Beats me. Well, you sold them the insurance policy. You must know something about them. I didn't sell the policy. I just permitted it to be bought from me. How so? Melba Crane came snooting into the office one day, dropped the pearls under my plebeian nose, and wanted them insured. Uh Uh-oh. Why do you dislike her? She's a good-looking dame, and I'm pretty well-favored myself. That answer your question? Mm, Roughly, yes. So what happened? So I got Jim Markley, local jeweler in here, to appraise him, issued the policy, and that was that. I understand that the necklace was an engagement gift from some newcomer in town. Yeah, Dean Sellers. She had him hooked for he even got his bags unpacked. That skirt has the ethics of a boa constrictor and about as much personality as a face painted on an egg. (laughs) Somehow I don't feel I'm getting an unbiased opinion. You won't at this address. Why can't she climb down off her pedestal and play ball with the rest of us? The crane name, the crane tradition, the crane social position. The only thing they're not so high and mighty about is the crane bank account, because there isn't one. Yeah, except lately. As I understand it, old Phineas has been flashing money around pretty freely the last few months. Yeah, so I've heard. Don't ask me to explain it. I can't even explain Phineas. What do you mean? He's a rare one, that old boy. Old school tie, mouthful of mush, that sort of thing. But, you know, if it was a matter of protecting the family name, I actually think he'd commit murder. Now, here's our star to tell you about Monday's intriguing episode of this continuing story. Monday... A thief stalls for time, an old man lies desperately, and a strange girl whispers the dread word, murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us Monday night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 